When it comes to sports betting, the stats show that how much you bet might actually be more important to your bottom line than what you bet on. That's what bankroll management is all about. It won't tell you who to bet on, but it will guide your decisions as far as how many bets to make and how much to wager. In this video, we break down the basics of how to manage your betting bankroll. If you follow our tips, you'll be able to keep more of your winnings and you'll never lose more than you're comfortable with. You'll also learn to track your results and figure out which bets are losing you money overall and which ones are your big winners. Let's jump in. The very first step towards being able to manage your bankroll effectively is to actually have one. Most sports gamblers don't have a clearly defined betting role. When they want to make a bet, they take out money from their regular accounts, and when they win, the money gets mixed right back in with their day-to-day -day cash flow. It's a big mistake, and it's the number one reason most people don't have a clear picture of how much they're actually winning or losing over a month or a year. A lot of people might be watching this saying, yeah, 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 that's so obvious. But do you actually have a separate betting role? First, decide on how much you can afford to put towards betting on sports and separate it from your regular bank accounts and day-to-day -day finances. Once you have your betting bankroll separate, don't add to it and don't take anything out of it. If you have a good day and win some bets, don't immediately pocket the money and start spending it on regular stuff. The goal is to grow your betting bankroll to give you more ammo to bet with in the future. That's never going to happen if you're always spending your winnings. Staking systems refer to how many bets you'll make and how much you wager on each bet. There are a lot of different options, but for beginners, we highly recommend a fixed staking system. That's when you bet the same amount on every single bet, regardless of how much of a lock you or the people on TV think it is. We also recommend making fewer bets. As a beginner, it's way more valuable to spend your time researching the teams and players you plan to bet on. Betting the same amount and making fewer bets overall will make step three way easier. If you want to manage your money effectively, you need a clear picture of where your wins and losses are coming from. You can get special software to help you do it or just start with a simple spreadsheet. Break your betting down by sport, the kind of bet and how much you're wagering and whether you win or lose. It won't take long for a clear picture to emerge about where you're winning and where you're losing. One really important part of money management is knowing when to stop. If you had a bad run and you're getting emotional, you're way more likely to chase your losses by making bad bets and betting more than you're comfortable with. Decide on the number that you're willing to lose in a day or a week, for example. If it's $100 and you lose it all on the first day of the week, stop betting and go back to studying until the next week and the next $100. If your week starts off really well and you win all your bets, it's also a good idea to stop betting and lock in a profit for the week. The final step might sound obvious, but in real life, it's the number one way people sabotage their own money management plans. When you run bad and lose your entire week's bankroll on day one, it's tough to stick to the plan and stop betting completely. Having the discipline to follow your money management rules is a big difference between smart betting and what most gamblers are doing. For lots more information, check out our full guide to sports betting bankroll management, available for free on WSN.com. Thanks for watching and good luck.